you brothers and sisters in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, what a wonderful item we have had. This is Mpo Snukwani from Val District. We the one hosting you with today's afternoon program. I will introduce the other presenters from the same district. We will be having the second speaker, Gugule Tumzalose followed by Brother Pascal Nube, followed by Sister Nepolo Mbata. Yes. Thank you. I'm sure this month has been an exciting one to each young person out there. Having a full 31 days dedicated for Youth Month. Yes, it must be so exciting. Yes, it comes to say we as young people on this generation have no fear for the future unless as we have forgotten how the Lord has led us in the past. This Sabbath afternoon calls us to relate on how the Lord has led the young people in the past. The first presentation will be focusing on one of the most familiar young man, young person in the Bible by the name of David, the youngest son of Jesse, young and ordinary shepherd. Time to time he took care of his father's sheep. In a sacred place of being the shepherd, God prepared him for a purpose. Yes, to each every young person, God has a purpose for you. At one time, Goliath from Philistines challenged Israelites. That challenge took more than one day. They coming in and they going out. We shall turn our Bible in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17. We're going to read verse, verse 11. I'm going to read it here with the easy vision. Saul and Israel soldiers heard the things Goliath said, and they were very afraid. Yes, that's the first part. The first word we get that they were very afraid. That's the first part of fear. We know that fear is something that 
doesn't allow you to be who you are, to express yourself, or to say anything. Actually, it threatens you from free. Sometimes there might be things that has been said about you, maybe that have led you to fear. Or maybe you have heard certain things said about you. You might be fear as well from those things you have heard. During this time, they panic a lot. During this panic mood driven by a fear, David goes to the battle front, young as he was. Verse 24, While the Israelite soldiers saw Goliath and ran away, they were all afraid of Goliath. All of them from the Israelite side, they were afraid. They had fear in them. What they could do was to run away. The fear of Saul had led him to convince David otherwise. Verse 33. You, can, you can't go and fight against this Philistine. You are not even a soldier. And Goliath has been fighting in wars since he was a boy. We can tell clearly that this statement is a statement that put threats that David could not do simply because he's not a soldier, simply because Goliath has been exposed since he was little. But remember what I said. I said that God prepared him for a purpose in a secret way. Even so, David's faith stood still fearless. Verse 37. The Lord saved me from the lion and the bear. The Lord will also save me from this Philistine. That's the powerful statement of faith here that David had. It made him to stand fearless. The moral of this presentation, it is not about how big the giant is, but how strong your faith in God is. Verse 45, let us hear the faith that David had. David said to the Philistine, You come to me using sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord, all-powerful, the God of the enemies of Israel. You have said bad things about him. That's what David is saying. Today the Lord will let me to defeat you. I will kill you. Today I will cut off your head and feed, and feed your body to the birds and wild animals. We will do that to all the other Philistines too. Then all the world will know there is a God in Israel. What a powerful statement of faith by a young person called David. Yes, so powerful. I would like to invite every young person to have a fellowship with God and faith in Him. As we always sing number 35, the last stanza of it. Powerful message, still fearless, young people. As we lean, it doesn't matter how the situation is. 
It doesn't matter the pandemic that you might be facing. It doesn't matter the Goliath that is in front of you. With faith in your sight, trusting in God, you will be able to stand fearless. Again, we saw that David, being the great man in his faith, it also led us to that chorus of the young people that I would like us to sing and keep it in our hearts. That's saying, Tumelo, Kitebe, Kitama, Jesu. Those two things, they are together. Tumelo, Kitebe, Kitama, Jesu. As you keep your faith on in Christ, walk with him so that you can stand fearless. Jesus has assured us, Lo, I am with you all the way, even unto the end of the world. Stay blessed. O yes, O go be zele kayam. O ya be za kanyeram sham. Ilanga lo tando ulishiam. O ya usim kangandi. is the beginning and the end. Greater is he who is within me, the God who knows everything about everyone in any kind of any situation. Greater is the king in me. The king in me holds power and authority on heaven and on earth. The cross could not hold him. The grave could not contain him. The Pharisees could not find any fault in him. Even the prostitute could not seduce him. See, this king of mine has a name, and at the sound of his name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Um, heaven is his womb, earth is his footsteps, he is three in one and one in three, I said there is a king in me. I carry his presence, my heart is his palace, my body is his temple, and I am his reflection. The king in me is the God of grace. No matter how many times we sin and fall short of his glory, his love is able to renew us every time. His blood washes us whiter, whiter than the snow. This king
teaching of mine is God, Christ himself. See, he doesn't need an introduction for he himself is an introduction. If I were to speak of him, I would run out of breath before I even run out of words. If I were to write his definition down, I would run out of pages before I even reach his definition. Because you see, his definition is beyond what man can measure. He can become anything you want him to be. Just like to the children of Israelites, when they were thirsty, he became the living waters. When nations were hungry, he diverted to become the bread of life. <laughs> See, this king of mine doesn't need a boat to cross the river. Instead, he just walks on water. He commanded unto the land and it gave forth vegetation. He commanded unto the sea and it gave forth living creatures, but he had a meeting with himself. He spoke to himself and out of him I came. <laughs> There's an artist in me. Look at how he took water and saw, mixed it together to create such a beautiful structure, which is me. I said there is a king in me. I carry his presence. My heart is his palace. My body is his temple and I am his reflection. Oh, for Lord Jesus Christ. Please, I would love to share the word of God at this moment. In John chapter 16, verse 33, please, if you do have your Bible by your side, let us open John chapter 16, verse 33. It says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye may have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good courage. I have overcome the world. May the Lord bless us in the reading of his word. As Jesus was at the edge of his earthly ministry, he saw that it was good that he leave his own disciples and go to the Father, even though they needed him most at the right moment, because he knew that they would have to pass from tribulations. But he ensured them by saying, Be of good courage, I have overcome the world. So we saw that the disciples, after the ascension of Christ, they had faith and courage to stand because they have no fear, they had no fear of anything that will come upon them, even if they knew that it was about life and death at their moment, because the leaders of the church at the right moment, they never wanted the disciples to take the message of the truth to all over the corners of the world, because it was not pleasing them. So in that manner, we see that they took the message of the cross to all the four corners of the world. And that we see the results coming out by us at this right moment. We are preaching the gospel. We have freedom to read the Bible. Grace to the disciples that they had no fear of preaching the gospel to the world. Even that we may see an example of a young man who is called by Martin Luther, who had no fear by taking the message to his a rightful place or we may say to his surroundings of society it may happen even to you that you may have fear to take the message of the cross to all over the world it may not be all over the world but to the people whom you are close with we can tell about the friends we can tell about the teachers who teach you at school we can tell about the society which you live you may be afraid to take the message of the cross to the world but i assure you right now that if you decide not to take the message of this cross of jesus christ as the gospel and spread it to the world it means that you have fear to present to the world the god whom you worship but let me assure you right moment that in john chapter 14 he said he went to prepare a beautiful place for you and me it is your rightful place that you may be there at the right moment if only you may not have fear of taking the message to your own family as a young person to take the message to where you play as a young person to take the message to where you live I may say even from school, it is your right to take me, you know, the message of the cross to all over the world if you do not have fear. Because as the same man, same as Martin Luther, who fought as, at his time by taking the message of the cross and, and, and neglect the teachings of the, of the system of worship which they were holding the elders because he knew that they were against Jesus Christ. Then that young man, because of loving Christ, he just took himself and said, I, by faith, 
I will just live by. It is your rightful place as a young person to take the message of the cross and not be afraid, but yes, fearless at the right moment. I love to, to, to stop there only to remind you that Christ loves you and he will forever be with you if you do not fear to present him. Greetings in the most wonderful name of our Lord soon coming Jesus Christ. Uh, my name is Nok Olombata and this afternoon I hope everyone had a great Sabbath since morning. We will be continuing with our theme, Stall Fearless. As my previous speakers have spoken, I will also be wrapping it up for the afternoon. I will start by acknowledging God in our life. He is great, He is wonderful, merciful, and He's the most powerful God for anything that might seem to make us fear. So let us not allow fear to, uh, to hinder us from worshiping God and doing His will. With that being said, I will be touching on the point that says, hold fast till He comes. Um, one would ask, but how does fearless um, go hand in hand with hold fast till he comes? Well, hold on a little longer once while we try to engage in our Bible and see how does the two go together. However, one needs to note that fearlessness is the key in our Christian lives to withstand and hold fast to the faith of Jesus Christ until his return. With that being said, we'll open our Bibles in the book of Matthew chapter 24. Now you will understand that the, the book of Matthew, um, Christ warns about the signs of his second coming. That when we see these signs and all these things happening, we should know that his coming is more nearer than we had first imagined. That will be um, verse 21 and 22 that I will be reading. That was chapter 24, verse 21 and 22. It reads as follows. This for then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been seen in the beginning of times until this time. No, nor ever shall be. Verse 22. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. And as, as I'm reading this, I'm quickly reminded of the, the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5, where Paul writes and warns the, the Christians that um, in the last days, there will be terrible times that will befall us. So um, in this, in, in this uh, chapter, we are being reminded that um, one day we will be persecuted. That one day there will be famines, there will be wars, there will be natural disasters that will befall us. But we need to be fearless and stand still with our faith because um, we know that we are, we are waiting and hoping for the return of Christ. We should not be shaken and not be wavered by all the circumstances that we'll be facing but we should hold fast to that uh, glorious day when christ shall return um in closing we'll also be looking at revelation chapter 1 verses 7 whereby christ reminds us that says i behold i come quickly and every eye shall see me so let us be patient let us wait and hold fast to the Lord that he is coming very soon and let let us not be fearful in all our lives and in John chapter 14 verses 1 to 5 Christ still encourages us that um, let not your hearts be troubled ye believe in God and in me because in my father's house are many mansions and I will go and prepare a place for so Christ is reassuring us that he will return and come take us home. So let us hold fast to his return while we stand firm on our faith, while we stand firm on our belief in Christ until he comes. In the name of Jesus.
Jesus' name, God may God bless the reading of his word.